All right, everyone, welcome back to the last section of Uniform Circular Motion. Uh, it seems very different, but they are very much connected. We're going to be talking about universal gravitation, just conceptually, because the math gets maybe a bit much. Okay, so Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation. So this is a huge thing. Um, you know, a lot of times we think about gravity and, you know, we just think about, oh, okay, gravity is something that you experience on planets. But, you know, what is the source of gravity? And it gets kind of complex, but we're going to kind of talk something more simple and basic from it. So gravity is always an attractive force. Uh, you can almost kind of think about it as like magnets. So how gravity forms is every mass, every object that has a mass has a certain amount of gravity. So maybe the pencil that you're holding maybe your computer, everything that has mass has gravity. The reason why we feel the Earth's gravity, gravitational pull, is because it has a lot of mass. Okay. Um, but, and we can see some videos and demonstrations to see this. So the more massive the two objects that are attracting each other are, the stronger the force of gravity and vice versa. The closer the two objects that are attracting each other are, the stronger the force of gravity and vice versa. So yeah, for example, Saturn. Saturn is huge. It's so much bigger than Earth. And if you were to go on Saturn somehow, there'd be so much more gravity there. However, since it's farther away, we don't feel the pull of gravity from Saturn. Okay, so the two forces in this, in this scenario are equal to each other, even though the masses are different. Yeah, so this is another important thing to know. So we have the Earth. And we have a person here. And the Earth is pulling on us right down. But another thing to know is we are pulling on the Earth. Okay? Um, so it's just like, okay, that's weird. I don't see the Earth moving. Well, the thing is, the Earth is so big, such a small amount of force is barely going to move it. While for us, we're so small that this small amount of force is very much going to move us. Okay, so everything is pulling on each other with equal amounts of force. It doesn't mean that we're moving the same amount or we're accelerating the same amount. Um, but we do exert the, the calculator that you have next to you exerting the same amount of force that you're exerting onto it. Or it's exerting onto you. Okay, so this is the formula for uh, universal gravitation. You don't have to know it, but maybe it'll just help you make sense of things. Okay, so the force of gravity of attraction is dependent on this G universal constant, mass of one object, mass of the another object, the other object that it's going, and how far they are from each other. All right, anyway, let's move on. So let's look at this conceptual example. Uh, at which point will the gravitational field be the strongest, and at which point will it be the weakest? If you want to pause it, feel free to do so. But it's going to be the strongest at A and the weakest at D. Why is that? A is the closest, so that's why it's the strongest right here. Uh, and D is the furthest, and that's why it is uh, the weakest right there. Okay, moving on. So this is a great video. It's really, really interesting. Really kind of mind-blowing. Highly suggest watching it if you haven't. Okay, moving on. Uh, so this kind of demonstrates on Earth how all masses attract each other. Okay, move on. Conceptual example 24. Looking at the diagram at the right, which scenario will have more of a gravitational force between each mass? Scenario 1, scenario 2, both are the same. So in both scenarios, we have the same mass, m and 2m. But what's different is the distances between each other. So which one's going to have more gravitational force between them? It's going to be scenario 1 because they are closer together. Okay. So the, for, the force of gravity is going to be from here. They're both going to attract each other like this. But on this one, since they're further away, maybe it's just going to be like this. Okay. Okay, moving on. So again, diagram at the right, which scenario will have more of a gravitational force between each masses? So very similar. This time they're the same distance, but this one has more mass than this. So since that has more mass, scenario 2 will have more of a force of gravity. Okay, going toward each other. All right, moving on. Look at the diagram on the right. Which mass will experience more force? So looking at this, you might think, oh, 
since this one is smaller, it's going to it's going to get feel more of a force towards this 2m. However, remember that all the forces are equal. So this force, these two are going to experience the same amount of force in opposite directions. Um, but this one is going to accelerate a lot more. So the acceleration of this one is going to be a lot more because this mass is smaller. Okay, so which one's going to experience more force? Both will have the same. Okay, next example over here. Okay, so very similar problem. Conceptual example number 27. Look at the diagram at the right. Which mass will experience more force? So yes, this 3m is a lot bigger than this little m. But anyway, like I explained with example 26, both will experience the same amount of force. Their acceleration will be different. The smaller one will accelerate a lot more, but both will have the same force. Uh, same, similar kind of question over here. I'm not 100% sure why I put three of them. But anyway, <laughs> if it's not hammered into your head yet, both will ex experience the same amount of force. Okay. All right. Uh, moving on. Uh, example 29. Uh, let's say that, you, uh, that on the surface of the Earth, you weigh 280 newtons. If you were to travel on an airplane and send high into the air, how would this impact your weight? Okay, so now you are on this airplane. And what's going to happen is you are further from the center of the Earth. And since you are further from the center of the Earth, what that means is you're not going to have the force of attraction between you and the Earth is going to be less, meaning your weight is going to be less. So it would slightly decrease. It'd be very, very low. I've tried on the airplane to jump. Uh, you do not notice much of a difference. And when you do the calculations, it's it's, a, it's almost insignificant. But it is slightly less. Okay, moving on. Uh, some cool things. So now we're going to talk a little bit about orbits. And I guess this is why it's kind of about uniform circular motion. So the sun is orbited by planets asteroids and satellites the earth has its own orbiting moon and satellites and something i guess to know is okay so i guess let's call this the earth whatever and then we have the moon and then orbiting means that you know it's going around like this okay so object in orbit exi exhibit two primary behaviors they travel at high speeds endeavoring to maintain a straight line trajectory and two, uh, gravitational forces prevent them from following a straight path instead of instead of inducing a curved motion. So what's happening with the moon, and Newton kind of discovered this, which is kind of genius, is it's trying to fly out, right? It's trying to fly out of orbit, but gravity is pulling it in. And that's what's happening at every moment. It's almost like falling and gravity is catching it keeping it in orbit, keeping it going in circle like this. So consequently, orbiting objects experience a continuous state of falling toward the gravitational center, but the continuous tangential motion prevents them from colliding with the central body. This results in a stable circular or elliptical orbit. So it's like really cool to kind of understand this. Uh, there's a video of this demonstrating this, so I highly suggest watching that. And this is the last question here. Uh, the moon revolves around the earth, what force is directly responsible for this circular motion for the moon? Okay, and by now we should know that this is by the force of gravity. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching with uniform circular motion. For the next unit, I'll be talking about energy, so I hope to see you with that. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye.